below energy physics. Uh, for example, like what is the rules of this local spin is going to place in low energy limit? Sorry. And uh, before we get into talk about the properties of the, these strong correlations, we first need to know the pathway to realize such limits in the real materials. And I think the most conventional way, of course, is to directly find materials with with electron uh, with partially filled electrons in this well localized atomic orbitals. And uh, the most uh, say uh, the most uh, salient example, of course, is this F electron F fermion systems. And uh, another way to realize such limits and uh, it's kind of extended studies in the in the past few years is this twist uh is in this uh twist non uh, twist twist existence and in in particular of course the most famous one is this twisted bilayer graphene as you as you stack two layers of this graphene on top of each other and make a small twisting angle you would introduce the so called moray potential into the system uh which is going to smash out the big brain zone into small pieces and uh which we call the moray brain zone and inside this moray brain zone actually through the tuning of the angles, the bandwidth can be very, very small. And uh, the third example here, and uh, which is also going to be the focus uh, of my talk today, is, is about this geometric induced flat band system. And uh, of course, the most well-known example is this cargo lattice. Because of the geometric fluctuations, we can obtain this flat band either on top of the, the whole band structure or either on the buttons of the band structure. It depends on the details of your parameter tuning. And there is uh, also other kind of geometric induced flat band system, for example, like this bipartite crystalline symmetry, uh, crystalline lattice, in which the uh, in which the lattice sites can actually be divided into different kinds of sub lattice. And uh, if the numbers of these sub lattice are different, then we can, uh, according to the rank conditions, we can also have these flat bands. There are also other type of geometric induced flat band system. For example, like the leaf lattice, the split lattice, or, or the graph lattice, all these are belongs to the category uh, we call the geometric induced flat band systems. And uh, before we get into the realistic compound, let us also look at the elements. We know that the strong correlations, uh, uh, st uh, strongly interacting the electrons are actually turned to recede in partially filled orbitals that are well localized around the nucleus. And uh, this is the famous uh, uh, commit, uh, com uh, commit called Smith's uh, diagrams in which the elements in different colons actually de describes orbitals with different quantum numbers. And from bottom to top, the orbitals becomes more and more localized. And uh, the row from the left to right actually describes the elements with the same active orbitals, but with different nuclear charge. And, and we know that an increasing of the nuclear charge is also going to pull the orbitals towards the nucleus. Therefore, it also becomes more localized. The interesting elements are typically, not even though not all of them, but the interesting elements are typically lies in this cro crossover region, we, which we call on the brinks of the, these uh, magnetisms. Uh, for example, like these cerium elements and also these uranium elements, which we, which typically appears in the condo lattice systems, and also these uh, chromiums, these ions, and as well as these nickel uh, which uh, which are regarded as the correlated transition metals. Uh, we next discuss what kind of physical consequence consequence of this strong correlate uh, of this uh, strongly correlated effect can happen, and. Uh, and of course, most uh, famous one and most obvious one is these different instabilities can be in, uh, can be introduced by the strong correlations. The, these different instabilities can happen in many channels, like the magnetic channels, like the charge channels, and sometimes it even can give us the superconductivity phase. For example, like in, in these heavy fermion systems uh, for these Syrian uh, rolling in DF5 materials, we have this anti-ferromagnetic -ferro phase and also we have this superconductivity phase. And uh, if the charge density of, oh, sorry, if the carrier density of the conduction electron is relatively low, then the emergent RKK1 interaction in this heavy fermion compound can also be ferromagnetic, which means that we can realize ferromagnetic condo lattice systems. There's also, uh, this, the charge order is also being predicted by numerical simulations 
at some particular feeding. I mean, this is the phase diagram studied by the cluster DNFT method, even though it is still in the absence of real materials. And the similar uh, instabilities or different, all these uh, different orders are actually also uh, being observed in these geometric induced flat band systems. Uh, the most salient and the most pronounced example of, of course is this flat band ferromagnetons. And it has been observed in these ion thin materials. And the, uh, these antiferromagnetic correlations are also being observed in these ion germanium materials. And also there's some superconductivity uh, uh, phase has, has been observed in these 135 materials. Another important influence from, the, uh, from these strongly correlations is actually in the dynamical region. It can lead to exotic behavior like the strange um, uh, metal behaviors, as well as it can also drive the system into a quantum critical point. And uh, the experiment that I would like to mention here, and one of the most famous one is, is this uh, inelastic neutron scattering measurements in these heavy fermion systems. Uh, uh, it shows that uh, this uh, uh, dynamical spin sensibility shows this dynamical Planckian scaling behavior, which means that it's an H bar over KBT scaling behavior for this inelastic neutron scattering with a fractional exponents alpha uh, range from 0 0.7 to 0 0.8. And not only in these uh, spin spin correlations, the uh, dynamical Planckian scaling also appears, uh, also leak into these charge degree, uh, uh, charge channels. Uh, for, for example, like you can observe this H bar over, over uh, uh, KBT scalings in the optical conductance measurements in these uh, Eterbian rhodian 2 silicon 2 materials. The, uh, for the for the flat band systems, actually, these strange me uh, metal behaviors are also being observed. For example, like the, in these Kagome lattice systems, the transverse resistivity actually gives us these linear T scalings of your uh, in your resistivities. And uh, besides the two D system, there's also these strange metal behaviors which has been observed in the three D flat band pyrochlor type of systems in these uh, uh, copper vanadium uh, sulfur. Here is the summary of the similarity between these two systems. Number one, both of them should, can be regarded as a strongly correlated system in the sense that the interaction is uh, larger than part of the, at least some, some bands of the, uh, uh, some bandwidth of your bands. And uh, there, there are a lot of experiments that has been observed these different type of uh, orders, which is induced by the strongly correlated effect and also in both type of system, these exotic dynamical scaling behaviors has been observed, including the strange metallicity as well as the quantum criticality. And uh, all these uh, kind of similarities gives us the hint that there may be there's some generic picture to understand these two type of systems in the same ground. And here is the plan of my talk today. Uh, I will further push. Uh, I will push forward this direction further, and uh, there are too many questions that I would like to focus on. One is about the metallic quantum critic criticality that can emerge out of this heavy fermion system as well as these flat band systems. And the, the other one is, is the following, that in the generic case, actually, the flat band in the non-interacting limit is not really necessary to be at the fermion energy. And uh, the question is, in this limit, whether or not this flat band uh, can still contribute to the low energy physics. And uh, the methodology that I will I, uh, I, I talked about today in today's talk is uh, is also widely discussed in the Moray systems uh, recently, in which they also trying to connect the flat band in this Moray system to the heavy fermion systems. Let us begin the first part. I will talk about the quantum criticalities in both these two types of systems. Uh, let's begin for uh, let's begin with the heavy fermion system first, and uh, the easiest way to describe a heavy fermion system is actually write down this type of Hamiltonians. There's two type of uh, for, uh, fermions. One is this conduction electrons with a very dispersive bands, and the other one is this very localized f electrons, which are sitting uh, only uh, which is not that dispersive, and uh, you only associate with it with the local energy. And you have this interaction turn adding on these uh, local moments or these local localized F electrons. 
And the salient features for this Hamiltonian is that uh, if we ignore this uh, interaction first and uh, look at the band structure from this uh, non interacting Hamiltonian, we found that actually the flat region of this uh, band structure is dominant by a single atomic orbital, which is, of course, this original F orbitals. And we expect that when the strong core uh, uh, coolant interaction is introduced, uh, the charge degree of freedom of this F electron is going to be freeze out. Therefore, the spin degrees of, of freedom is going to place a building block for the low energy physics. Uh, if we and and if we consider the large U limit, uh, the this Anderson lattice model is gonna gives us this uh, condo lattice model, and uh, in addition to this condo hy uh, hybridization terms, we can also introduce this RKKY interaction between different uh, spins. Uh, the way we think about a heavy Fermi system is to begin with these exchange interactions between the local mo local spins and the mobile electrons. And because of this very strong exchange interactions, the local moment and the conduction electron is going to turn, tend to form this spin singlet state. We can also think about that the condo, this type of condo singlet is a bound state between the local spin and the conduction electron. And on top of that, the low energy excitations is going to describe by this composite object. It contains a local spin, but also it contains a fermionic operators. Uh, this composite ob object is going to follow the fermionic statistics, which means that uh, it is a composite fermion. We can intu intuitively think about uh, this in, the, in, in this way, that for condo lattice model, there's the backgrounds of this condo singlet, and on top of, uh, on top of that, uh, there's these composite fermions are moving, moving above this background. Uh, uh, important property of this composite fermion is that actually it is very fragile in the sense that the weight of the bare electron that projected onto these quasi particles is actually very small. In other words, that the quasi particle weight of this composite fermion is also very small. To begin with, such a, a fragile quasi particle gives us the hint that maybe it can be easily destroyed in the sense that the local moment and the conduction electron, again, decoupled from each other. We therefore can uh, introduce this type of phase diagram, which is, which, uh, which is captured by two kinds of energy scale. One is this near uh, temperature, which describes the order and disorder transitions. The other one is this E local star, which describes the hybridization, the hybridization transition between the local spins and the conduction electrons. And uh, by turning the parameters, we can realize the, the uh, uh, different kinds of phase transitions and the uh, particular case, uh, that, uh, which is uh, the so-called condo destruction quantum criticality, is that, uh, is that these two types of energy scale actually vanish concurrent, concurrently at the same point. In other words, that at this point, besides the order and disorder quantum phase transition, which can be described by the conventional Landau uh, uh, paradigm, there's an additional localization and the delocalization transition of this local moment, which is indicated by the hybridization and the dehybridization between the local spin and the conduction electron. This quantum critical point actually separates two phases. One is this uh, uh, spin order phase. I mean, the local spin itself developing to an order and uh, it is fully decoupled from the conduction electron. Therefore, the Fermi surface only have contributions of from these uh, conduct uh, bare conduction electrons. And another another phase is is what we call the condo screen phase, in which uh, these composite fermions still survive, and uh, the Fermi surface is actually uh, contributed by these composite fermions. Uh, and uh, at this quantum critical point, in addition to the conventional Landau type of order parameter fluctuations. Uh, we also have an additional fluctuations that is coming from this hybridization and dehybridization uh, fluctuations. And uh, the question arises is that how does this additional fluctuations is going to influence the superconductivity? The method we would like to introduce here to solve this model is, uh, is the so-called extended dynamical mean field theory. Uh, we map the lattice models into this Bersa-Fermi uh, Anderson model in which you have a local spin 
coupled with a, a fermionic bus, which uh, which is being used to mimic the conduction electron. And, and in the addition, and in, in addition to that, it's also coupled to a bosonic bus, which is being used to capture the spin fluctuations. And you would have all these self-consistent equations. And in order, of course, in order to study the superconductivity, you need an extension version, a uh, cluster versions of this extended dynamical mean field theory. And uh, here is the phase diagram we obtained. We observe a large region of the superconductivity near these points of the condo destruction critical quantum critical point. And an important thing is that the entire Fermi surface is going to contribute to the pairing. And at the quantum critical point, actually, the transition temperature reaches, reaches several percent of the Bell condo temperature, uh, which is much higher than the conventional BCS type of superconductivity. Therefore, it is it can be regarded as a high temperature superconductivity. And uh, we compare our simulations with, with the real experiments, for example, like this Syrian rhodium in five materials. The, uh, the transition temperature here also reached several percentage of the Bell condo temperature. And another important feature for this quantum critical point is the sudden jump of the Fermi surface, which can be detected by this quantum oscillation measurement. Uh, in the above, we discussed about the influence from the quantum criticality in this heavy fermium compound. And then, but what about the flat band system? And uh, can we have a sim similar mechanism for the quantum criticality that also appears in these flat band systems? And uh, before we get into the theoretical part, let us first revoke some experimental observations here. For example, like in this nickel three indium materials, the, nic the nickelite atoms actually develop into this cargomy lattice, and the DFT flat bands actually indicate a flat band, uh, active flat band that is uh, exactly cross the Fermi energy, which means that it's going to contribute to the low energy physics. And uh, there is uh, this linear T resistivity, uh, linear in T resistivity scaling behaviors observed in experiments. And uh, in addition to that, there is also this Curry Weiss spin sensibility which has been observed at high temperature, indicating the formation of the local moment. And uh, another important, uh, interesting experiment uh, is this R-pass measurements in these iron tin materials. This is the figures of the, uh, uh, this figure is actually check, uh, check the positions of the peak of this momentum distribution curve. It shows, uh, it actually shows these linear dispersions near the Fermi energy. And moreover, the width of this um, uh, momentum distribution distribution curve also shows the, uh, this type of linear scaling behaviors, and in combining these two points, it indicates that uh, maybe the self energy in this system also scale uh, have this linear in omega or linear in t scaling behaviors, which is consistent with the prediction uh, the so called marginal Fermi liquid uh, behaviors, and all this evidence actually shows that in a Kagome lattice there is a great chance to realize a non-Fermi liquid. Let us first, uh, uh, let us revoke, uh, let us review some basic information about this Kagome system. It has the, uh, it have the symmetries uh, and it belongs to the space group 191 in the 3D versions of it. And uh, there's three sub lattice per unit cell. We, uh, you can also call it, uh, the, the atoms are sitting on the Y composition 3C. And because of the destructive interference, uh, you you're gonna have this emerge uh, this this purely flat bands, uh, either on top of your the whole band structures or either on the buttons of your band structure, and also if you include the spin orbit coupling along the z direction, uh, you would uh, gap out this band touching point, but still still the band here is pretty flat. Recall what we note in the heavy fermion system: we have a single orbital whose kinetic energy is very, very small. And therefore, after we introduce the interaction, the electrons at these orbitals is going to play the, uh, play the role of the local spin. And the, the goal here is, is, is actually the same. We want an orbital to mainly capture this flat band such that the kinetic energy for these orbitals becomes very small. And in fact, this destructive interference picture has already given us some hint about what kind of orbitals we would like to choose? It is actually these compact localized states. Uh, you can see, I mean, different colors here for this different site actually uh, 
uh, describe different phase of this wave function. And uh, if you look at, uh, if you compile this with this de destruct interference, actually they show the same phase difference. And uh, uh, different from the heavy fermion systems, this compact localized state is a molecular orbital and uh, it can be used to uh, capture these fragments. But these compact localized states have, have, have the following disadvantage. One is that it is not orthogonal. Uh, this means that if we con uh, uh, calculate the overlap between this compact localized state between two different unicell, actually it is non-zero. And the second point is that it does not constitute a complete base, complete base for this fragment. At least, uh, the, uh, to be more specifically, the block state at this band touching point, uh, uh, this gamma point should be removed to really construct this compact localized state. And let, 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 let us re recall what we want. We want a well-defined Wannian orbital, and it can be uh, primarily used to capture the fragment and it should be orthogonal and it should be complete. And of course, we don't want to be, uh, break any lattice symmetries in priority uh, in prior to uh, such that we do not introduce additional bias to the system. But uh, in order to find such uh, one-year orbitals is actually very hard because we need to overcome a couple of uh, obstructions that is coming from the topology for example, like if we introduce the spin orbit coupling, this fragment is appears to be here. But if we calculate the uh, the spin chain numbers of this fragment, actually it is not it is non-zero, which means that uh, during the constructions of the one year orbitals, we would uh, uh, we we would uh, uh, we would face with these z two topological obstructions. Another topological obstruction is actually coming from the constraint from the crystalline symmetry. And uh, I will illustrate this point in a simpler case. Suppose we have this, uh, this type of lattice, uh, which actually I, I will discuss later, which uh, I call this, this type of late lattice as the clover lattice. And uh, suppose this, this kind of lattice only have one kind of symmetry, which is the mirror symmetry. And uh, we, we can uh, actually calculate the, uh, the ERIP or the eigenvalues of this uh, mirror symmetry for these different bands. And the uh, uh, salient feature is that uh, along this gamma K line, it is a high symmetry line of this mirror symmetry. But at, uh, if we focus on, on these flat bands at a K point, uh, the mirror symmetry eigenvalue is going to be my, uh, plus one. But at the gamma point, the mirror symmetry eigenvalue is going to be minus one. And uh, the contradictory comes when we're trying to use a single orbital to capture all these flat bands because we don't know which symmetry eigenvalues we need to associate with these localized uh, one-year orbitals. Uh, if we associate, uh, if we think, uh, think that this one-year orbital is even, then the gamma point cannot be captured. If we think it to be odd, then the K points cannot be captured. And of course, a potential strategy is that instead of one year rise these flat bands alone, we, are, we, we will try to one, uh, find one-year orbitals in combine both this flat band and also the nearby dispersive band. And uh, this is exactly what we're uh, going to do in the following. Uh, we know that in, in a one orbital uh, model defined on the Kagomi lattice, you would have this flat band, we, which you cannot find a well-defined one in orbital. But, and, and, therefore, and therefore, we consider a model, which is actually a two orbital model defined on this uh, Kagomi lattice. And we combine these two bands uh, the, uh, one of the flat band and also one of the dispersive band from the other orbitals. And what we found that is, uh, is that if we add up the spin chain numbers of these two orbitals together, actually it is zero. And, and, uh, and of course, we also check the constraint from the crystalline symmetry. And it tells us that actually we can one rise these two orbitals together. And uh, this is exactly what we do. We extract these two bands and make the one in construction and build out the tight binding model upon these two new one in orbitals. And a salient feature is that each, each band actually this can be described by two distinct one in orbitals. The flat band is mainly captured by this WNF and this dispersive band is mainly captured by this WNC. And uh, it is very inst instructive to actually compare this WNF 
with the so-called compact lo localized states I introduced before. Uh, they, number one, first, they are both the molecular orbital. They extend to several uh, atomic uh, sites. And also they have the same symmetry eigenvalues. If you look at the patterns of this, uh, this color map, the color map uh, uh, indicates the face of it. Therefore, they, they share the same symmetry eigenvalues. And the third point is that the wave function amplitudes are mainly concentrated on this middle hexagon, uh, which means that this, the obtained orbital is, is also very localized. But there's a very essential difference between these two things is that this WNF we obtained uh, is a different unicells are actually orthogonal. And also this WNF uh, can be used to developing uh, develop a complete basis for the flat bands. And, the, and here's the effective model we obtained. We denoted this WNF to be this small f and also this WMC to be this small c captions. And the, the Hamiltonian is uh, take the following form with the hopping between this f electron and the, and the c electron. And the important thing is, is that this, uh, this new Hamiltonian is not defined on the original atomic lattice, but instead defined in, uh, onto this triangular lattice because the one in the center for these two orbitals are actually sitting on the middle of this cargo lattice. And above that, we, we, introduce the, uh, we further introduce for, uh, the interaction tense. Uh, uh, the most important one is this on-site coolant interaction on these F orbitals, as well as these RKKY interactions. And then we will, ne uh, and, and next we will try to simulate the phase diagram for this effective Anderson model. And uh, the phase diagram has already been actually been hinted by this RG floor in this first Fermi condo model. Uh, if the uh, condo interaction is very strong between the local spin and the conduction electron, actually you would flow to these fermionic fixed points, which means that your uh, composite fermion is gonna survive. And, uh, if, uh, and if the bosonic coupling is much stronger then you would, uh, uh, the, the system is going to flow to these bosonic fixed points. And in, in between, uh, you would undergo this, uh, the so-called condo destruction quantum critical point. And uh, this type of, type of uh, impurity RG flows have the counterpart in, the la in this lattice version. And uh, by analogous to the condo physics, this orbital selected mode energy scale are, uh, are actually characterized the energy scales of the hybridization between the effective, effective localized F electrons and also the itinerary and the conduction electrons. And the, here is the data we obtain, and here is the phase diagram. As we incre increase the strength of the, this RKKY interaction, one can see that the magnetic order parameter is gonna go from zero to non-zero, which means that the system undergoes a, magnet, undergoes a magnetic transitions. And uh, besides, besides the development the development of the magnetic order, we also see that this orbital selective uh, energy scale, selective uh, mode energy scale is also decreased and uh, vanish concurrently at the same point as the developing of the order, which means that we realize uh, this, time, uh, this orbital selective quantum critical point, but this orbital selective transition is not happens in the conventional atomic orbital, but instead, it happens in these molecular orbitals. And we focus on the quantum critical scaling behaviors at uh, above this quantum critical point and, uh, and, st and uh, study the dynamical scaling behavior. The data collecting of this, uh, this uh, lattice spin sensibility tells us that uh, at this quantum critical point, there's, uh, uh, the spin sensibility shows these dynamical sc uh, Planckian scaling behaviors with, uh, with this edge power mark h bar omega over kbt scaling. And actually this phase diagram has been, uh, after we propose our series, such phase diagram has been realized in this uh, chromium type of uh, Kagome systems. Uh, and under pressure tuning, actually they uh, they successfully make the system uh, undergoes this quantum critical point. And you have this Fermi liquid phase and this uh, charge density, uh, this, uh, this density wave phase, which is actually correspond to the heavy Fermi liquid phase and this order phase. And the um, interesting thing is that at this quantum critical point, they observe this 
unconventional superconductivity domes. And uh, what about the other implications or the other things we can further test by this mechanism? Uh, one uh, first and, and the foremost, of course, is about this dynamical Planckian scaling behavior, uh, which we which we derive in in in, in our in our methods. It indicates a linear in T uh, reaction rate, uh, uh, which means that it also provides an understanding for the linear in energy damping rates that is observed in the R pass measurement. And uh, there's a other further tests we can make, and uh, and the first um, and the foremost, of course, is directly measure this in inelastic neutron scattering and see whether the uh, dynamical uh, spin susceptibility is also going to follow this omega over t scaling behaviors. And also, we can test it in the charge channel and measure this optical conductance as well. And uh, the other experiments uh, can also be done, which can be used to Kept, uh, uh, we know that across the, this quantum phase transition, in addition to the dynamical scaling behaviors, you would also have this jump of the Fermi surface across this quantum critical point, which can be measured by the r paths or the Hall coefficients or the other quantum oscillation measurements. And uh, here is a summary of the of my uh, my the first part of my talk today. Uh, we study we first study the uh, the quantum critical behaviors in a heavy fermion system and they discuss how the loss of this quasi particle is going to influence the superconductivity phase and and then we we turn to the flat band systems we and we successfully map uh, this uh, flat band system into a uh, effective condo lattice descriptions but the the low, the the orbitals here is no longer the f orbital or the atomic orbitals instead it's a molecular orbitals which uh, which spreads in uh, across several uh, atomic sites, and uh, we also discussed uh, what what kind of consequence we would expect from these descri descriptions. We discussed about the quantum criticalities uh, driven by uh, from these orbital selective correlations, and uh, discussed about what kind of uh, physical consequence it's going to lead to, and also our study set on the stage to understand the superconductivity phase in these flat band systems. And uh, in the above, we discuss about the situations when the flat band is close to the Fermi energy. Therefore, the interaction is so strong that give us the exotic strong correlated effect like the quantum criticality and so on. But what if the bell, uh, flat band is away from the Fermi energy? And uh, what kind of topolo and also what kind of topological phase can we obtain in these strongly correlated settings? Uh, again, uh, uh, before we're talking to about the flat band system, let us first uh, get into the heavy fermion first. We, uh, we've already know that, and uh, we, I've already described it, described it that uh, because of uh, in a heavy fermion system, because of the condo effect, it is going to generate this uh, low energy composite fermion, which we call the condo driven composite fermions uh, in the low energy limit. And uh, this composite fermion is a fermion, therefore it can host uh, the, the conventional topological properties just like the ordinary non-interacting fermions. Therefore, these composite fermions can uh, can, gen uh, can, can generate uh, the condo effect can, can host this one uh, these, uh, these wire nodes and, uh, and also this emergent wire nodes is gonna pin into the Fermi energy as well because of the condo effect and uh, th this emergent band is going to be highly renormalized, which means that the velocity of it is also going to be very small. And uh, besides that, uh, because of the non-trivial barrier curvatures appears in the system, you would have this giant spontaneous Hall effect, uh, uh, which has already, these two phenomena has already been confirmed by the experiment. And, uh, and, and therefore the question arises is that, can we develop a genetic method to identify materials that realize this type of topological heavy fermion systems? And uh, the answer is yes. And uh, the tools we would like to use is, is, is the constraint from the crystalline symmetries. What we propose is that uh, in, the, in, the, in a condo lattice system, the strong correlation is gonna drive the emergent low energy excitations, which is described by the composite fermions we described before. 
And uh, the space group symmetries uh, here not only gonna constrain the topology of your conduction electron, but also it's gonna constrain these low this this type of low energy excitations, uh, which means that uh, which means that what we need is to first identify the materials in the weak interacting materials, and to dig out what kind of symmetries protect these topological nodes, and then we can find the counterparts of it in the heavy fermion compound, which shows the condo physics. And uh, as a representative, we propose these mirror symmetries can protect these these nodal line semi-metals in the square net systems. And we calculate this barrier uh, phase along the z-direction to, to justify our, what our, uh, our findings. And also we calculate the special edge state, which is a drone head states in these nodal line semi-metal materials. Uh, and uh, through the material search, we, through this material search, we successfully narrow down some of them. And uh, our uh, external, uh, our experimental collaborators synthesize one of it, and the specific heat at low energy shows this T square scaling behavior, which indicate that the present of the nodal line in a very low energy limit, uh, and which uh, and the, the velocity of this nodal line, of course, is going to be very small, which means that it's coming from the condo driven composite fermions. Then we go to the flap and systems. Uh, the, the, the problem we would like to focus here is that what's going to happen in generic case when the non-interacting flat bands are away from the Fermi energy and also can this uh, condo driven like topology is going to manifest in these flat band systems. Uh, the thinking of this project or the motivation of this is actually coming from these very exotic observations in these pyrochrome materials, copper vanadium sulfur. Uh, this this vanadium atoms actually develop into this pyrochrome type of lattice, and uh, and 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 therefore you should expect that this system should appear some flat bands in, uh, in 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 it, and actually it is, but the flat band actually identified uh, from the DFT calculation is actually much far away from the Fermi energy, but the R-pass measurements uh, on the other hand shows that the flat band is actually exactly at the Fermi energy. Clearly, there's a huge difference between the measurement and uh, the simulations. And uh, the issue is that how, how should we understand this, this difference? Uh, let us uh, revoke what we understand from the condo lattice, uh, from the condo systems. The, le the lessons from the condo physics is that the local energy in a heavy fermion system is also not necessary to be exactly at the Fermi energy. And uh, as long as the local interaction is large enough, then the electron number for this orbital is always close to the half field and uh, can be treated as some local moment. And after hybridization of this local moment with this conduction electron, actually the motion of this local moment is kind of reactivated, is kind of reactivated and uh, give us this dis dispersions from the composite fermion, and uh, this dis uh, this dispersive feature should uh, should still sit very close to the Fermi energy. And uh, and the, the question then arises is that can this electron electron correlation generate flat band uh, at the Fermi energy also appears in these d electron based systems, uh, in particular these flat band systems. Uh, instead, and uh, instead of a three D directly simulator three D materials, we focus on a more simpler case, uh, which is the two D versions of of this cobalt lattice, and uh, and you can see that because of the quantum interference, you would have have this flat band which is uh, close to uh, flat bands in the system, and this flat band can actually also describe by this compact localized state. And uh, this this kind of uh, lattice is actually not artificial, and uh, it it has been recently uh, synthesizing this iron germanium uh, FGT materials by Ming Yi's group, and also these flat band features has already been also been observe, observed spectroscopically by the RPATs. And uh, we we would like to further simplify the model a little bit. Uh, we we consider a model that without the C three symmetry. And only keep the mirror symmetries for later, uh, later studies, and uh, 
And as, as, as I discussed before, that the mirror symmetries for the for this flat band have this uh exchange. Therefore, we cannot have a well-defined one in orbital to describe these flat bands alone. But we can combine uh this this flat band as well as the other dispersive band together and uh, make these one in constructions uh with all these orbitals. And uh and this is the uh you uh, Actually, you can combine two of them or either three of them to make the effective uh, uh, one in constructions. And here we take uh, take uh, all all the bands on top, all the three bands on top for the constructions. And uh, after that, actually, we can project the uh, Hubble interaction uh, uh, on, onto this uh, effective orbital basis. And uh, of course, the most important one and the largest one is going to be the on-site cooling interaction on this uh, on these uh, running orbitals of the flat band. The flat band is, is, uh, is also mainly captured by a single running orbitals. And, uh, and uh, we use the three spring method to take into account the correlation effect in these effective Hamiltonians. Uh, and uh, as expected at very large, sufficiently large interactions, the F electrons is gonna go into fully localized Therefore, give us this uh, condo destroyed phase, where the uh, the the locals uh, the the electrons in the this effective uh, f electron uh, f uh, orbitals are fully localized and give us these local spins, and uh, and if we decrease the and the, and if we decrease the interaction a little bit, we we're gonna enter this so called the condo spring phase. Where the local moments acquired uh, is is uh, is hybridized with the conduction electron again, and uh, give us this very fragile electronic ex excitations, which is actually exactly at the Fermi energy. And uh, this uh, uh, this is more clear uh, from this spectrum, uh, this this plot of the spectrums. In the long interacting limit, this flat band is away from uh, from the this d orbi uh, f, f orbitals are actually away from the Fermi energy. And uh, if we add the interaction on top, on top of these uh, effective F orbitals, then uh, in, in the condo, uh, condo screen regions, uh, you would have these uh, flat bands very close to emergent flat bands very close to the Fermi energy. And of course, if the system have the, uh, if the system have some symmetries which protect the node, for example, like in these systems, the uh, the mirror symmetries actually protect the nodes along these gamma k lines in the non-interacting limit. We would also expect that in this condo limit, uh, the, this this type of nodes should still survive, and uh, here and uh, and uh, it should also be very close to the Fermi energy, which means that we realize this kind of topological condo semi-metal in these d electron based materials. And uh, here is the implications. We propose a potential way to understand the inconsistencies between these DFT calculations and uh, also these APAS measurements. And uh, the key ingre ingredients for this understanding is that the molecular orbital is going to play the rule of this local moment in the strong correlated limit by, ana by analogous to the local spin in the, in a condo in the conventional condo lattice systems. And uh, the hybridization between this local spin and the conduction electron <clears throat> it's gonna lead this to this emergent flat band that is pinning exactly to the Fermi energy, and of course, uh, if your conduction, uh, if your system has some symmetry constraints on, on top of it and allows the topological nodes appears, and uh, it, it is also gonna appear in the uh, in the strongly correlated limits, and uh, and also it's gonna be very very close to the Fermi energy. And uh, here's the summary of my uh, my talk of the second part we realize uh, uh this this uh we 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 map this d electron based hubble model on a bipartite crystalline lattice which have this flat band system uh, which have have this band flat bands into an effective anderson or condo lattice descriptions and uh, the orbital selective uh, correlations is not really happens in the atomic orbital but instead it happens in this uh, new defined molecular orbitals and we discuss about the correlation effect on this geometry induced flat band system. Uh, uh, one is that the emergent flat band is gonna be pinning exactly to, to the Fermi energy. 
And the second part is that if the symmetry is protecting some nodes appears in the non-interrupting phase, it's, it is also going to appear in the interact strongly correlated limit as well and uh, give us the so-called topological condo uh, driven semi-metal. And uh, here's the talk today. Thanks everyone. And uh, any questions or? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lei. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty nice. Let me let me ask you a question first. So, yeah. You talk about the uh, you know your your possible interpretation of this uh, flat band uh, sort of near the Fermi level. I mean, this is sort of a, a mostly uh, sort of a post general office experiment uh, you know discussion of, of the flat band right uh, compared yeah. with. Uh, so so my my question is I mean uh, do you have some uh, sort of a, a tangible uh, predictions that the one can you know potentially test your model? I mean, let's say you do have a flat band you know, near the mm -hmm. Fermi level. So, mm -hmm. so what would you what would you expect? I mean, typically, you know, you would think the flat band uh, would induce uh, some sort of feral magnetism, or if you put charges in, you know, potentially superconductivity and, and so on and so forth. You know, what yeah, what yeah. would you expect? Let's say you have some sort of flat band, and then you know, try to encourage people to, uh, yeah, to to search for these, uh, you know, potentially exotic, uh, more exotic phenomena that, that can yeah, potentially yeah. be induced by flat band. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, uh, that, 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 that's actually a very good question. And uh, I've already discussed about some experimentals which we can further explore in these flatband systems. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that uh, uh, the one of the things, of course, most interesting is, is that whether we can drive these Kagome systems into a quantum critical points and uh, what kind of uh, quantum critical behavior we would expect from these, uh, these, these scenarios we propose. Uh, one is that you would have this dynamical Planck and scaling, and uh, it's called it can be tested. Quantum, quantum critical for what? I mean, of a magnetism or quantum critical of a... uh, it, it's, it's for mechanism, but it's not only for mechanism. There's also a jump of the Fermi surface. Therefore, we call this, it, it's, it's a very special type of quantum critical point, which is beyond the order parameter or the Landau paradigm. In addition yeah. to the order parameter fluctuation, you also have a change of the Fermi surface, which the, which means that the formulaic degree of freedom also anticipating here. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, you have you talk about these flat bands. I mean, it's not even clear, you know, if yeah. you do have flat band near the Fermi level, what kind of a momentum you would have, right? I mean, can you uh, let's can right, you be let's... more specific? Yeah, I mean, because I mean, this is sort of a mostly, it's not a criticism to you, right? It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. In general, the the experimentalist is much more interested in you knowing, you know, what what you theorists guys can you know can tell us. Is yeah, I understand. Post, yeah, post the uh, post the uh, you know experimental you know uh, understanding, or, or post experimental fitting of, of the the results, right? I, I know I've been a bit harsh, but uh, maybe yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, for for what kind of orders we would expect, uh, obtain actually depends on the, I mean, the macroscope macroscopic parameters or the yeah. interaction forms in these systems, mm -hmm. but uh, if the if the system is in the paramagnetic phase. Then maybe this order is not. Uh, therefore, in in this paramagnetic phase, actually, there's uh, other things that we can test. For example, mm -hmm. the formation of this local moment at high temperature, which mm -hmm. is which do not expect from the conventional from uh, non-interacting pictures. And also, if we can change uh, uh, tuning the system across the quantum critical point, there's a lot of prediction that can sit on, on top of this quantum critical point can be tested, mm -hmm. like the jump of the Fermi surface and all these things. Yeah, but even, I mean, let's say, for example, in, in the mean system uh, with the copper, you know, has a flat band near the Fermi level. Uh, yes. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but I mean, so so what would, I mean, there's no magnetism in the system, right? I mean, what, what does the flat band do? Uh, that's right, that's right, yeah. I mean, why, why is it, you know, why is it so exciting, yeah? But, uh, but potentially, if you add some strange of it, Add some strength in the in into the system, you can drive the system to some uh, instability like the magnetons or charge orders. Nobody knows. Okay. It depends on the details, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to give you a hard time. You only graduate students. Uh, so. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Professor Alu. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Can yeah, I? Please. Do you hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I think I have, angry system, <laughs> I have been working well, on a system for a few years, mm -hmm. which okay. really shows something which looks like that, which is oh. the sodium covalent. Mm -hmm. This is a triangular system in which uh, for a given sodium content, two thirds, uh, you get a, a selective Kagome 
uh, lattice in the copper in the in the plate and we have very nice indication that you have uh, local moment behavior at high temperature with oh, okay. uh, with uh, uh, condo like uh, behavior at t equal zero with a very small uh, uh, condo temperature should be around one k or something like that. Okay, and, that's interesting. Uh, this system looks like flat bands. Uh, it's uh, I don't uh, I, I uh, it's it's a kagome. So being a kagome, you expect to have flat bands. And of course, the, depending of the number of carriers, it's not clear whether these flat bands are pinned at the Fermi level or not. But your suggestion might might explain that that oh, okay. uh, yeah. that that you could pin the the the, the flat band at the um, uh, at the Fermi level at low temperature, while when you increase temperature, you see local moments. And that is very clearly shown in the transport experiment because we get we get uh, at the high temperature uh, indication of isotropic scattering, uh, magnetic scattering. And when you go to towards low temperature, we, we, we see the change towards um, Fermi liquid behavior with T square dependence, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't know whether you, you have seen this paper, which is never quoted by anybody mm -hmm. working in the field. Uh, I, we have been doing a lot of work on that. And you could find it's one of my latest papers uh, on the matter, which is published in PRB. Mm -hmm. uh, I, can, I can send you the references if you want. Uh, I am pretty sure that the kind of theory you are considering could apply. Of course, we have no way in this system to look at the to look at the uh, the band structure uh, by Arpes or etc. Because this this uh, dirty systems, right? Yeah, quite dirty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's not dirty. It's very clean. In okay, fact. disordered. I should say disordered. I should. I don't no, mean no, dirty. No, it's the not that disordered. No, 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 no. Okay. It's very clean. It has a very nice uh, residual resistivity. Uh, okay. Okay. RLR is uh, is about three hundred. No, it's it's a rather clean system at this concentration of two thirds. Okay. Because okay. In fact, this two third concentration, the sodium pins very. Uh, in a very nice structure and drives mm -hmm. the, the the cobalt in the kagome. That is, yeah, I, think, I think the I think the problem, Doctor, you know, Professor Lu, is that the, the cobalt pay system that you know people worked on it before, but yeah. I mean, a lot of theorists, I mean, have given up on that because it's yeah, not the, the, the quote unquote the whole subject. Not, yeah. they didn't do the work that we did for ten years. And we have been working very heavily for 10 years to sure, clean sure, sure, sure. and to do careful things and to arrive to sure, single sure, sure. etc. So I am sorry to say that most of the work which was done at the beginning was done on very dirty systems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The sodium yeah. content was not pinned. Mm -hmm, While mm -hmm. we have demonstrated that uh, you have only very, very definite values of the sodium content, which allows to fix the the clean situation and the two thirds is perfect case with very large reproducibility we, we insist mm -hmm. in the papers i am quoting we insisted on the reproducibility of the data you will never find in all these kagome systems that you oh, find sure, sure. such a reproducibility as we got and mm -hmm. we demonstrated it and so uh, and and i think really that we are dealing with a situation which corresponds really to 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 flat bands of course we we can only say that we have flat bands from the observation we have sure, sure, sure. it's what in the paper it's like heavy fermions it's yeah, really yeah. like like uh, I, 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 look at the paper okay uh, okay Madhu, yeah thank you thank you published. Uh, and we have yeah. more we have much more data we have been doing a lot of work at the, at the high field lab in in mm -hmm. Dallasie. And we have more data than published, but already what is published is very clean. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Chimel, uh, I mean, you have a question? Oh, well, counter, counter well, my comment. I just add a comment to yeah, what sure, the, sure, sure, sure. the pension complained about. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, 
the point of uh, Lay's talk is that these flat band systems are more interesting than even uh, Pencheng, your sentiment uh, expressed. Okay. Uh, namely, okay. namely, you know, you could have a variety of um, electronic orders. These could be magnetic, mm -hmm. charge order, et cetera. Uh, and the point of the flat band is that they would also be felt in the fluctuation regime. So drive any order you have to the quantum critical regime, and you can see these uh, low energy physics of scaling that they talked about, but also at high temperatures, uh, local objects, such as in a spin case, local moments, uh, which uh, you can see by uh, susceptibility, by uh, what uh, Henri was talking about, and uh, transport, and also by STM, uh, watching the temperature dependence of spectral No, wave. I'm asking a very much simpler question. I'm basically asking, you know, what can you tell us, you know, from theoretical perspective, that if you do have a flat band, say, near the Fermi level, you know, I mean, I guess, I mean can you basically tell us whether it can potentially be far or anti- no, no. Or, or anything but like that. Your, I mean, your only interest is about electronic order. Mm -hmm. Then uh, that's the question. I mean, if a flat band has many instabilities in different channels, right? Mm -hmm. Could it be magnetic? Could it be charge channel, etc.? Uh, that's a very complex question, but maybe not. That's not the most interesting question. The point of topology is that these flat bands have to be hybridized with wide bands. So just like uh, in the heavy fermions, where you have atomic f orbitals. They may mm -hmm. order it to magnetism, charge density wave, et cetera, but they also can, through hybridization and condo effect, uh, gives mm -hmm. you quantum fluctuations. Okay, okay. No, no, I'm, I'm much more mundane, right? I just wanted to know that, uh, you know, if, if there's some that's tangible it. things that one can one can check, I mean, experimentally. Right. And stranger metal is also quite tangible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, so, so then would you expect then in, in the copper system, since the flat band is near the Fermi level, your transport measurement will reveal linear resistivity? Well, non ferromagnetic beta was already observed by me. Yeah, there's a, let me show the data. In the copper system? I mean, I, 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 In didn't, copper system, much, yeah. I didn't pay too much attention. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah. This is a copper system measured by Ming, and it, it shows a <clears throat> exponents of 1.6. It's, it's a non ferromagnetic Wait, the, the, well, I mean, 1.6. Okay, I mean, it's, it's not it's not two, but I mean, depending on the temperature regimes, right? In which temperature regime you see this, yeah. Not the thermal liquid, low temperatures. I mean, what more do you want for non thermal liquid? But also the the the. I thought I thought non thermal liquid. I mean, okay, so I mean, a lot of I mean, a lot of materials you can measure, right? You can have exponent, you know, probably you know not exactly two, right? Yeah. It's not thermal period, right? There are no, mm -hmm. but also the Kagami metal, the cesium. The new one, cesium, chromium, three. That, that's a, I agree. That's very interesting. Yeah, I agree. I mean, but it's not that, clear. That has precisely the phase diagram that uh, is implicated by this line of uh, calculations. No, no. Yeah, that's where I agree. That's very. But but I don't. I'm not sure. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure that. that I mean, that system. Yeah. I and mean, where's the flat band is right? I mean, it's not clear at this point. Well, the FT says it's at the Fermi energy. It still needs to be measured. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. that kind of tests what we should sure, do. Sure, yeah. sure, 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 okay. All right, fair enough, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, any other question for, for Lei? Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, he gave a pretty good talk for, you know, for, for, for a junior graduate, I mean, a senior graduate student. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bye. Bye. bye.